This is the Marketing Hero Podcast by Clear Pivot, turning marketers into heroes. Welcome to the Marketing Hero Podcast. I'm your host, Monica Evans, and today I've got Sailor Bowler on the call today. She is the Senior Product Marketing Manager at Nylas. How are you doing today? I'm well. Thanks, Monica. Cool. Well, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and what you do for Nylas? Sure. Um, so I'm actually an atypical marketer. I'm a salesperson turned marketer. I started my career fresh off an undergraduate degree in clinical psychology and fell right into commercial real estate where um, I started off as a file clerk in a legal department, got into leasing, um, made my way into property management, which I like to jokingly say is kind of like getting a real life MBA because you're managing um, budgets and marketing and leasing, which is the sales aspect, you're doing community relations, you're managing your staff. Um, it really is a little bit of everything. Um, that actually led me out to Colorado, where I worked in the senior living industry for about six years. And there really started digging in even more to the marketing aspects of my job. Um, I became a marketer because I often felt that the corporate level marketing was sometimes out of touch with the local markets that we were in and i found myself often being a salesperson army of one where i would have to you know re-educate a customer or kind of educate them from scratch with a little more detail um, and accuracy than that broader umbrella market was able to marketing was able to provide and after a while i kind of went from saying you know, I like, surely there's a better way to do this to, well, maybe I could do this better to, you know what, I'm, I'm going to try to do this myself. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, I decided I wanted to be more time, spend more time being proactive, whereas sales is a bit more reactive. You're, you're talking with people who've already been nurtured to a degree to you, or you're perhaps cold calling, um, the dreaded cold call. Um, and you, you know, your, your strategic messaging's already been done for you. And I wanted to be more on that strategy end and really focus on creating compelling reasons to engage with the brand I was working with. Nylas is actually a pioneer of productivity infrastructure solutions. So we really own the communications layer of the software development stack. Our products are built to help software developers create products faster, uh, bring them to market faster and better um, without having to become subject matter expertise, uh, experts on every little thing, communications. Um, any developers out there listening, if you've ever had to dive into like Microsoft documentation, that is not a fun way to spend your day. Um, so we, we take that burden off of you. And our initial um, offering was connectivity APIs where we allow developers to connect to any email, calendar, and contacts platform in the world with an out-of-the-box solution. So for those developers that need to build productivity features into their applications, we're the only platform that allows you to easily leverage communications data to deliver those intelligent workflows and create frictionless user experiences. So right now, Nylas is serving about 450 customers and growing. Um, we have over 50,000 developers using our platform. Wow. So we process about a billion API requests and 20 terabytes of data every day. That's also growing. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Headquartered in San Francisco, and we've got offices in New York. I'm based in Denver. We have Toronto, London, and Amsterdam as well. So um, right now we're in high growth mode with about 55 million raised to date in our most recent Series B rounds. I was employee number 95 in May. It's now October. We're over 130 employees. Wow. Yeah. How long has Nyla's been around? Nihilus was founded in 2013. Um, Christine Spang, our, our founder, is an MIT grad, and she started out building email solutions, and we've evolved from there. Um, wow. So, yeah, we, we recently 
We're very fortunate to be named to the 2020 Inc. 5000 list of America's fastest growing private companies. So I've been busy in these these first few months. <laughs> yeah, you just hit the ground running right when you get hired. Yeah. Perfect. So what is your role um, and what does a typical day look like for you? Yeah, so my title is Senior Product Marketing Manager, and I'm really focused on a couple of different things. So one is reshaping our brand to reflect some new artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities for the communications tech stack. And I specifically own the go-to-market for bringing Nihilus to enterprise companies globally. Oh, wow. Um, so what type of marketing campaigns do you do for Nihilus? Or is it ABM? Is it lead generation? Or do you do a little bit of everything? We do a little bit of everything. Um, we're actually hiring an engagement marketing manager right now, um, which is fabulous. So I'm along with a slew of other positions. <laughs> um, and that person will really own uh, a lot of our email marketing. But one of the first campaigns we were running when I first started, so I can't take any credit for it, is a campaign we called Space Cheetahs. Our company mascot is a cheetah symbolizing speed and agility. Um, and there's just a lot, a lot of strong ties in the developer community to space with, um, for all different reasons. Um, so we worked with an external agency that helped us develop a gamified experience that we could invite developers to join via email and they would kind of move through this experience where they were assisting Captain Nyla, which is the name of our cheetah, um, through this space launch mission and they had to tackle various obstacles that were very specific to developer challenges and so it was us basically using our brand our key brand values and reasons to believe taking them on this journey that they were clicking buttons and engaging with and dodging asteroids and navigating through wormholes and all of this other cool stuff and at the very end of the campaign once they were successful they would have the opportunity to complete a form and since COVID, we're not able to reach people in their offices like we used to be. This form was requesting a personal address, so we were, in essence, refreshing our contact database at the same time with these targeted accounts. And now we would actually send them a physical um, spaceship to assemble. Mm -hmm. So it was very um, impressive, touch, interactive, <laughs> and had both a digital and a physical component because who doesn't like getting something in the mail that isn't a bill? <laughs> I know. I mean, you don't really hear that too often these days about kind of direct mail campaigns. So that that that's a really cool idea. What was the outcome? Did, did, was it a success? I would say yes. I think um, we we had a wider audience than a traditional ABM campaign, but the return on investment was strong, and we had um, we we were surprised actually by the amount of people who were willing to engage and give us a a personal address so that we could send them that gift afterwards. Um, we really that was kind of an untested. Um, an untested way of doing things. And this was a campaign that we had planned to execute prior to COVID and had already begun working on. So pending from confirming a, a personal or a professional address to requesting a personal address, we really didn't know quite how it was going to go. So we were, we were pleasantly surprised. How long did the campaign run for? Uh, we ran it starting in, it was right when I first started, so the last week of May through the end of July. And then do you, how many series of emails did they get up until they got the thing in the mail? Uh, it was a wave, so it really depended on at what point they chose to engage with the uh, virtual interaction. So if they got that first email clicked right through and you know, completed the mission, they would get that spaceship within like five to seven business days. So um, anytime between that, you know, the end of that first week, all the way to the end of July, depending on how many emails it took for them to engage. No, that sounds really cool. Um, it was so that was, that was really fun. <laughs> I remember seeing it like 
and going, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, I no. Here. I had never marketed to software developers before. I was familiar with the C-suite, like the non-technical C-suite, and I was familiar with the technical C-suite, but developers really are special people. They're super smart. They like to get right to the point, but they're not afraid to dive into really technical information. Um, and so getting the messaging just right for a lot of marketers is can be challenging because you kind of have to strip away all that frou frou like fluffy stuff and you know flowery verbiage or anything remotely salesy sounding. Yeah, they just a turn off. Yeah, I, I I've worked with many developers and they like what their inbox for like subscription is like zero to none. So yeah, the information has to be extremely engaging for them to even want to give any kind of information. So yep. that it's is all that. About what is the value that you can provide? With yeah. This. So that's that's impressive. Kudos to Nihilus for that one. Um, yeah. So in terms of so that was a campaign that was starting to run when you first got hired on. What about since you've been at Nihilus? What type of campaigns have you run, and what has worked for you that you've seen? Yeah, um, so we've we've primarily been running lead gen by persona since the time that I've been here. Um, we we typically focus on our developer audience, um, especially with our growth segment companies. Getting into the commercial and the mid market areas, we look a lot more at product leadership um, and technical leadership. So really just testing out different things because we're in the middle of a strategic brand pivot on the heels of an acquisition of a company that's allowing us to build out some pretty significant artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities on top of our connectivity offerings. We're, um, just kind of letting our lead gen campaigns run right now, but we're gearing up to do more of this, um, introduction to productivity infrastructure campaign that really focuses on, okay, so if the connectivity layer is the foundation of this developer's, you know, communication tech stack, the next thing is gathering intelligence off the data that you're pulling in from your customers' applications, and then automating off that data is the next layer, and then finally, the user experience layer at the front end. So we need to run a campaign, and we will run a campaign that focuses on educating the market about this new category that we're creating. So that'll be my my next big initiative. Um, and then alongside that, I'm I'm working with an agency to do some personal research, but more on that later. Um, the other campaign I see us running in like Q2 of next year is going to be around kind of that evaluation roadmap or how to buy a productivity infrastructure solution. What are the questions these different personas are gonna to wanna to be asking to make sure that they're buying the right product for their business and that it meets the needs of their specific business. Um, and then how you go about implementing that in the smoothest way possible to get the quickest, best return on investment. Or if you're in a position where you maybe don't have the budget, but you need to figure out how to create the budget, how can you kind of pilot something in order to create budget and prove that ROI so you can then take it up the chain to your stakeholders and then you know, multiply that value exponentially with a deeper deployment. So those are two huge ones that are coming up. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sure that you have, does Nihilus have kind of like a freemium and then different tiers kind of products at the company? Yeah, we do. We do a freemium trial for our software developers um, that allows them to get a set amount of connected accounts for free for 30 days to test it out. And again, developers direct right to the point. They know right away if it's going to work for them. And we have a massively high success rate. So honestly, um, if we can get someone to try the product and they see how much easier it is to just plug and play with us and then not have to manage all of the provider changes, like every time Google or Microsoft or Yahoo makes a change, like they don't have to go quarterback that, we take care of it. Um, it's a pretty big no-brainer for them. <laughs> Yeah, no. And so do you have a lot of kind of training tutorials and stuff like that documentation that Nihilus uses? Um, you know, I don't know if they use I think like Alassian is a documentation uh, platform that allows you to have kind of all you know, your information about your product, how to use it, that kind of stuff. Is that pretty well developed out? 
We have a pretty extensive docs and references library. Um, in fact, it's it's one of the better ones I've seen. Um, I think Nihilus was really smart in how they structured our marketing team. So way before I was ever hired to kind of be the voice of like the product and C-suite personas, we hired a develop a developer advocate, Ben, who um, I joke is like my, my work brother. He's the yin to my yang. He's the developer voice to my product persona voice. And he has spent the last year creating docs and references and blog posts and that are SEO rich. And we, as a result of that, just dominate a lot of the SEO in our space. Um, it is one of the most incredible SEO power moves I've ever seen, to be quite honest. And he's extremely talented and, and humble about it. So yes, there's a massive investment in that. As far as what platform we use, I honestly feel like I knew this at one time. I can't remember right now. Um, but we do have a platform that we use to to get our docs on the website. And you talked a little bit about uh, Ben and how he writes the content and stuff. Um, and obviously that helps you, especially for a product manager, um, marketing manager that is. And how are teams typically structured at Nightless? I know it's a very, like a growing company right now. I mean, you went from 95 employees with you to now 130 plus. How is it, How are the marketing teams typically structured there? Yeah, I think uh, we, we've done a really smart way of structuring our team. Um, to be quite honest, coming from a smaller SaaS startup where I was part of a team of four and very much a marketing generalist. So I was across PR, I own our analyst um, and influencer relations. I was writing blog posts. I was managing social media, doing strategy, writing the integrated marketing plan for the year. Um, it was, it was a lot. And in this team, we, when I joined, there were eight of us. Now we're going on 12 um, in four months. So growing quickly. Yeah. And we're kind of divided into um, two pillars, really. So we have our VP who sits over both teams. And then there's the demand gen side where we have a director of demand gen and a demand gen manager who's just an absolute paid ad and SEO ninja. She's fantastic. Our engagement uh, marketing manager will sit on that side. We have our creative director who handles all of our design um, and consults on product design, but we also have a, a product designer nested in the product team. Um, and then over on the product marketing side, you have our director of product marketing and then myself, as senior product marketing manager, we just hired another one of me to assist with all of our new um, feature go-to-markets. And Dom is actually a transplant from our sales team. So his incredible amount of Nihilus technical knowledge and history, as well as in the field customer knowledge. And he's very well versed at working with our product team. So just super excited to have him join us. Ben is on our team as well. And then we also, as our developer advocate, and then we also have Sam, who is our director of sales enablement. So we really have a, a solid mix on on the team. Um, so our product our product management pod kind of functions um, in lockstep with the demand gen side. Um, the product marketing is a little bit more out in in the rest of the company as we sit at the intersection of sales and product and are, are very ear to the ground with the leadership team in terms of the direction that they want to take the organization. No, I, yeah, feel I, I left out our buddies in customer success. I've actually been working with customer success a ton. Um, so I work really closely with them on our case studies program. That's another thing that I actually own and, um, we're working, I think we have like nine case studies in the pipe just for the next like months and a half. So our, our CS team has been very busy. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So it seems like you, the structure at Nihilus is, is pretty solid in terms of you guys tend to, you know, work alongside, but also you guys have your own very different campaigns that you're running that just go hand in hand with each other. So that's... Yeah, we really, for anybody who's familiar with HubSpot's funnel to flywheel evolution, mm -hmm. we really run Nihilus like a flywheel. Um, so it, it kind of starts with our leadership team 
shepherding the direction of the organization, funneling down into engineering, who's building a product, our product team who's really shaping it and determining what needs to go out into the market next based on the demand that they're finding. Um, and then you've got our product marketing team who's bringing it to market and working on all the messaging and positioning. Um, and we support on competitive research um, in conjunction with sales. We do sales enablement, and then you've got the sales team who's actually taking it out into the field, gathering um, some high-level feedback about the sales process, and feeding that back into the funnel, and then customer success, who's really nurturing all of our customers, helping them um, connect and expand and deepen. So as someone you know, becomes an eyeless customer, they start, the first step is our connectivity APIs, whether it's email, calendar, contacts, a mix, or D, all of the above. Um, <laughs> so they might start with a handful of accounts and see how it works. And generally from there, they add more connected accounts. So that's the expansion piece, but then deepening is what we're bringing forth to market with these intelligence, automation, user experience capabilities. So then customer success, you know, runs that feedback loop back into really all the other departments, but it starts with us in marketing with case studies and then up to the leadership team. And it just, you know, we try to reduce friction within teams and between teams and just create virtuous feedback cycles anywhere that we can. Yeah, no. And speaking of kind of the flywheel and HubSpot, what kind of automation tools do you use within um Nihilus, what kind of marketing automation tools that, are, that is? Yeah, our marketing tech stack, we, we try to keep it simple. Um, so we have used HubSpot in the past, but about a year ago shifted over to Marketo. Um, that was pre-me. Uh, and then we do project management through Trello, actually, which is super effective for our teams. Um, we use Salesforce. That's kind of like the um, umbrella a database CRM for the entire organization. Um, so yeah, those are those are kind of our our primary setups. Obviously, like demand gen has their own suite of things. You know, where they're using Google Analytics and you know all those kinds of things to run reports, and they're using SEM Rush. Mm -hmm. You know, those those types of like keywording and SEO tools. So it's 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 diversified. Yeah, no, it sounds like that. Um, so we talked a little bit earlier on about kind of persona research, and you said we can talk about that later. I would really like to dive into how you guys conduct a, a research for your personas and what that looks like for you. Yes. Um, so when I arrived at Nihilus, we had used a research firm to sample over a thousand people. And in that research, it was really focused on the developers, product managers, product VPs, um, technical C-suite and non-technical C-suite. And it was very um, kind of statistical and we did some desktop research and did some historic nihilist research and came up with um, really six kind of core personas knowing that as we were targeting growth organizations, the growth segment at the time, the developers were our primary persona. Now over, over the summer, as we've started to build out these AI and ML capabilities and are taking Nihilus into the commercial and enterprise segments more deeply than we have before, um, and with more of a concentrated effort behind us, the need to do some more in-depth, like narrative-based persona research has come up because it's really important to us that we understand who our customers are, what they need, how they think, where they buy, so that we can build the best possible product to serve them and we can reach them in the easiest, most natural way in order to make their jobs easier. Um, I was talking with a customer recently who said, look, Sailor, Nihilus is going to be a career maker for me because I just saved my engineering team so much time and hassle by by purchasing you versus spending a bunch of cycles and money doing trial and error and testing um, to build connectivity features. And I was like, well, that is, that is great feedback to hear. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm excited to see if you take advantage of the AI and ML things that we're building, <laughs> because the lift that that takes off of a team um, 
is is commensurate. So we'll we'll see what happens down the road. But getting that kind of feedback just really drives home the fact that strong persona research is the foundation for you know a solid marketing set of initiatives. So we are actually partnering up with an agency to do that in-depth, more narrative-based research. I've used that before at a previous organization and the end deliverable is really fantastic. Um, it, it has everything from the reason this person gets out of bed in the morning to what are their most important roles or responsibilities? What are the pains and gains of their job? What, what are the tasks of their job? Um, it, and it really like gets gets into like how do they measure success? How do they make decisions? What is their role in each phase of the buying process? Discovery, consideration, decision. How do they research possible solutions? What information do they need to make a decision? What other products have they used? And what questions do they have about Nihilus specifically? So they also dig deeper when they're doing these customer interviews. So we we choose um, customers, we choose prospects, and we actually go to close lost folks and interview them as well. And through each stage, discovery, consideration, decision, and also engagement, we come to understand their rational drivers, their emotional drivers, what messaging points work well for this persona, and what types of content uh, work well so that we can really hone in on the value that Nihilus delivers for them when we're when we're messaging. So those benefits, those reasons to believe um, around the specific messaging points, like they're really, really well fleshed out and detailed. So I could turn around without lifting another finger and hand this deliverable to everyone on my marketing team, everyone on my leadership team, everyone on my sales team, everyone in product, everyone in customer success, and everyone in engineering, and they would all find a ton of useful information here to consider in their part of the flywheel process. Yeah, and how long do they normally take to develop that the research for you and put together yeah, that typically, end piece? Typically, the customer interviews take within about 30 days because we do we do a bunch um and end to end it's about three months i'm about parking in about three months to do this depth of research including the desktop research including creating the end deliverable including conducting and scheduling all of the persona interviews so yeah it's it's actually a fairly quick turnaround to produce an asset this valuable yeah, and it's it's it gets everybody on the same page within the company. There's no ambiguity whatsoever because this is what your customers, your prospects, and your audience is saying, and there you you can't refute it. You know, this is what it is, and we need to work towards it and capturing this audience, which is ours. You know, so yeah. across all the real benefit I find to doing it this way is that it, um, when it's time to do the interviews with those different personas, it's not anyone at Nihilus doing the interviews, it's this third party agency, this marketing agency that we've partnered with doing it. And that really allows our customers and prospects to open up deeply and share a very candid experience. At my previous company, this was super helpful because the leadership team and a lot of the sales folks had been out there in the field for a while. So they had kind of their, their own set of beliefs around who the audience was and what they wanted. And in some ways, the persona research validated that, and others, it didn't. Um, and it showed that other things were more of a priority or it brought up things that, you know, we were doing in, in sales that were more of a deal killer. And so it allows, it allows us to just focus on what mattered most to the customer, not what we thought mattered most to the customer. Yeah, no, that that sounds I mean, every company should do a persona research, a very in-depth persona research, because it's it's easy to kind of do the basics, but they don't really give you what you need to really create content and target your audience if it's just on the very high level. So this sounds quite impressive. I'm having kind of a, a 
big depth to that research. So doing the interviews, doing the desktop research, you know, hunting around the internet, seeing where these people actually like live and breathe in the digital world, looking at our anecdotal, you know, Marketo and Salesforce data, excuse me, our quantified Marketo and Salesforce data. Um, it's it's really like it takes a village of information to create this kind of well-rounded perspective as opposed to just being like hmm well i think they like this <laughs> yeah they feel like that or based on this limited segment of you know 20 customers in my automation platform i see they're engaging with this like you can get real narrow real quick and that might take you down the wrong road yeah i agree so in terms of metrics as a product marketing manager, what would you say is the most valuable metric you track? Mm, yeah. Um, the most valuable. That's a tricky one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always look at ASP. So really like are the contracts that we're selling getting larger, especially because I'm focused on bringing Nylas to the enterprise. So by default, enterprise deals are bigger. So if your ASP is going up, you're selling bigger deals typically to bigger customers. Um, but I think it's you know really important to keep track at the organizational level of the metrics. So what's the ARR doing? Um, your annual recurring revenue, what's the monthly recurring revenue doing, how are you tracking on new logos, are you acquiring new logos, and then of course, you know, what's your churn, you know, or and what's your contraction. So that's really as a company, it's I think ASP, ARR, um, CAC, so customer acquisition costs, um, net promoter score is something we watch really closely, letting us know how our customers feel about the brand and if they recommend us to others in the industry. Um, as a marketing team, we look really closely at conversion rates, ROI, bounce rates, those kinds of more, more in-depth um, metrics. Um, I, I really, like you said, ASP is kind of my target. Um, like it's my OKR of choice. And looking at that across growth, commercial, and enterprise segments, as well as the whole, is really indicative of our success. Great. Well, we're at the end of our podcast, but we always like to leave with a question for our um, guest, and that is, if you could be a superhero, which one would you be? Yeah, I think um, maybe because I'm an 80s baby and there's a movie getting ready to come out, but I would, I would have to go with Wonder Woman. I like her strong, empowered female stance. Um, I also like her curiosity. Um, you know, she's, she's in a new world and she's constantly asking questions and, and wanting to know why or why not. Um, and that I can very much relate to. I also think she's a very strong superhero. Um, she has a lot of fortitude and I aspire to be like that personally and professionally. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. She's, she's a great role model for just not children, but adults alike. So I have to agree with that. Well, thank you so much, Sailor. I really appreciate you hopping on with me today. Thank you so much, Monica. I appreciate you having me. It's a wonderful, wonderful podcast. I've listened to some other recordings and just, it's a, it's a great group of folks that you've have, have on here. So I'm pleased to be included. Thank you. You've been listening to the Marketing Hero Podcast by ClearPivot. Be sure to join us next time. For more information, visit www.clearpivot.com.